Well, it's raining. I uh, tried to do the repair last night on the raised bed, but the more I started cleaning it up and getting it ready to uh, patch up and stuff like that, the more I realized how rotted the wood actually was. So I made a decision earlier this morning, did a little research and uh, decided to come to Home Depot, get some wood. Man, wood is so expensive. <laughs> well, all loaded up there and it's definitely raining outside. <laughs> Let's see if it's raining where I live. Hey guys, keep with the tractor here. As many of you know, I have been struggling with whether to go with treated or untreated boards. And I finally made the decision uh, just like a week ago after trying to repair one of my old beds that had only been in place for about two years, I think. I must have got some timbers that were not hardwood or something like that, and they just were crumbling. It was, and I just can't, I don't want to replace my beds every two or three years, or even four years for that matter. I learned that the the beds, or the wood, the treated wood, um, was kind of a no-no, especially for like organic gardener, gardeners and things like that who didn't want the chemicals from the treatment, the pressure treatment that they use to preserve the wood, the preservatives, to leach into the roots, into the vegetables that you are planting in your raised beds. When I started, I was re must have been reading some old articles or something like that because back in, I think, around 2004, the, the, they stopped using, in, in, in like majority of cases, they stopped using the pressure treatment chemical that had arsenic in it, which is really, really bad for humans. It's one of my kids. Hold on a second. Hey, Zeke. Zeke. The chemical used to do pressure treatment back before 2004 was called CCA, copper chromium arsenate. And you can hear the last word there. It sounds like arsenic, which is not healthy for humans. It's definitely toxic and poisonous. What most, what, especially in the United States, uh, it's not real clear what other countries use, but in the United States, the regulations say that after 2004, all the lumber treated after that would have, be, would be treated by something called ACQ, uh, which is uh, alkaline uh, copper quat. And I confirm that the wood that I have today for my bed repair project is in fact using that. So really pretty much anywhere in the United States, you're not going to find arsenic used in the treatment of, of lumber. Okay. So you probably, you're going to be safe, but it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and find, you know, talk with your source or look at, you know, what um, their labels are to make sure that they in fact are not using anything that has arsenic in it. To be fair, to be uh, completely clear, the, the chemicals that are used do leach into the soil a little bit, but most studies that have come out on that who have kind of compared, okay, how does that actually affect humans? Again, we're, it, the primary source is copper, okay? Now you're probably gonna get as much copper, maybe using car copper tubing in your home or maybe copper kettles or, or whatever you might be using, you know, to cook your food if you're using copper. So probably not gonna be a problem, especially after it goes through the soil and the filtration process of the roots and things like that. Um, everything I've seen has been, it's, it's not, bad so that's why i've decided to go ahead and use the treated wood here so that being said i'm going to put that one to bed pun intended and move on to making or uh, repairing my beds and any future beds i'm going to go ahead and use treated wood until i learn further listen this is not a closed book i'm always open to more research more thoughts more ideas because i do want to make sure that the wood or the food that is coming out of my gardens, my raised beds in particular, is healthy for my family. Yes, I can use metal or I can use other, other you know, uh, bricks or blocks or something like that. Uh, but for what I wanna do, I wanted to have this more natural wood look and, and, and feel I like wood. So that's the direction I'm going um, for my raised beds. 
I hope that helps if you guys are starting in on gardening and wanting to build some beds uh, yourself and are wondering about pressure treated wood versus unpressure treated or untreated wood. Um, I've looked at this for a number of years and this is the direction I'm going to go. Uh, but it, guys, it's up to you. You've got to make your own choices. So I'm going to get started. So as you know, if you've watched my channel for any time, you've seen my beds. They are uh, in horseshoe, sh horseshoe shape and they're facing each other. It creates a nice little center. I eventually want to do some more things in the middle there. And so what I'm doing here, instead of using the timbers, wood has like tripled or maybe even quadrupled in price. So I just couldn't merit the cost of spending uh, the money for the four by sixes, which I currently have in, in the beds down there. So I went and went with two by sixes and I could finish them off on top with a flat board to kind of give them that same look and feel from the top down so it matches the pergola look and everything like that. Not, not a big deal, but just one of those little, you know, look and feel design nuances that I, you know, that, that do matter to me. And I, I like, I like it to look nice and uh, consistent in the design. I'll put a material list in the description below, but real quickly, um, I'm using these two by, two by six by eights. Okay, two by six inches by eight feet in length. There are 18 boards. I went ahead and got a 19th board just in case I missed a, you know, a knot or something like that. They're gonna stack, be stacked three high, okay? On top of each other. The longest side is, the, uh, is 16, and 16 feet long. The horseshoe shape is six feet and then it comes in and then the bed is four feet in width, okay? You'll see in a moment. On the longest side, I will have two long eight foot uh, lengths on the bottom row. Uh, you'll, you'll see that here in a little bit, but I just wanted to kind of go over, help you visualize the materials. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to go ahead and cut all the, prep all my boards. Cool thing about this design is every single cut is used. There is no waste in in the boards. Right after I cut all the boards, I forgot to cut the stakes. These are two by twos. Notice that they have little pointy ends that I've cut here that can go in the ground. They're going to mount on the inside and give the entire bed, um, you know, stability so it doesn't move and, and, and shift. Let's go assemble it now. I want you to take a look at this. This is what happens when you use untreated lumber. Look at those guys. I mean, they were in the wood. I mean, they, they're burying, they're eating over here. I just get this over here. There's another big one right there. Kind of having a hard time here, buddy. Go eat some other wood. You can finish this wood. I'm done with it. Not gonna use this anymore. Okay, look at all the ants. I mean, there is a colony of ants inside of the wood. Not going to happen with treated lumber, at least for many, many years. So another reason why I am done with untreated wood. Hopefully science has realized how to treat the wood without causing harm to humans. I'm trusting what I've read and learned. A little extra copper in my diet. If it gets into the food, it's not going to hurt me.
of date. I've got these anchored in now. The my little stakes, and this is leveled off to where it needs to be. So now I'm going to just kind of work my way around and get this first layer done. Then I can come back easily and finish the second layer. Here we are guys, I've got the treated lumber in, the two by six by eights, all in. I haven't, I need to level these off or cut them down a little bit below the board there still, but everything's in and planted. I am super, super excited. We've got 20 tomato plants in here, woohoo! With a lot of um, pruning and things like that, this bed will most definitely handle that load so super excited this week we will uh, dismantle these top brackets here and move this trellis over into this bed here so that these tomatoes have a wonderful trellis to grow on and I will probably put either run lines or put another cattle grate on uh, in between this this uh, pergola window here so that these four um, tomatoes on the end here will have something to go uh, vertical on so this is my completely repaired bed here and my tomatoes are doing well I am a very intense pruner I come through and I make sure that there's plenty of airflow down at the base of the tomatoes and I try to remove all the suckers that I possibly can. And I will also remove a lot of these bigger branches down here below. I leave them on for support initially, but then I'll come through and just clip them like so, because they simply are taking energy away from the fruit production. The, the chemical that's being used now is called ACQ which is alkaline chroma, chromium quat, copper, alkaline copper quat, or chrom, copper azole. Garden beds assemble!